So we got contacted by Bimbok, and they sent us a product in for video review. Maybe they haven't seen one of your video reviews before. Or they have super large balls. The box came a bit dinked, but that's what you get if you don't use bubble wrap. Let's open the box. Nice flaps. This here is the Binbok Play Evo. A wireless controller for the Nintendo Switch, but we'll try it on other systems as well. We get the controller, a manual in English, the charging cable, which is USB-A to USB-C, and here's the main event. The design is very similar to an Xbox 360 controller, and it fits perfectly into my hands. There's a premium feel to the plastic, and this thing lights up. You can play this in the dark. I play in the dark all the time. I'm John Luke. Let's have a look at the back. The center button here is used with the two on the outside, which are user programmable. We can create a sequence so one push can throw out a Hadouken or a special attack. We have auto fire toggle and also a button for vibration strength. Let's check the controls. The analog sticks themselves are very similar to one from an Xbox 360 pad. They're spinnable and clickable. The D-pad is clicky, has very low travel, and it's quite difficult to use. The buttons also copied from the Xbox 360. They're a good size and bounce back well. I'm very happy with these. The analog triggers at the back have just the right amount of resistance on them, making them feel very precise. The shoulder buttons feel decent too. To first connect, we need to use the USB cable to the Switch dock, or directly connect the controller to the switch via OTG cable. Once paired, we can unplug it and then use it wirelessly. So now that it's connected, how about we try some of the other features? This button here controls a light. We can turn it off or control its strength by holding it in. Relax, don't do it when you want to go do it. Relax, don't do it when you want to come. Give it one quick tap, it'll change the color. We have two nice shades of magma, but if we tap this button twice, we also have gradients. Hold turbo at the back, push a button and we can assign auto fire. Let's test the vibration. Beverly will get some good use out of this fantastic feature. We can use this main button to wake up the switch. And let's get into some gameplay. First up is Splatoon 3, and using the analog sticks, it works great. And there's a gyro inside as well, so you can use that too. Rocket League. Horizon Chase Turbo. And Sonic Mania. Comparing to the original Switch, there is an improvement with the analog stick, with no difference to the latency. We tried the controller with the PlayStation 3 and 4, but no luck but it worked when we connected it to a PC. It gets detected as an Xbox 360 PC controller, and here's the limit to the analog stick. Stop playing with your stick. Even when using this on the PC, it actually works really well, provided you don't need to use a D-pad. As soon as you touch that, it becomes very fatiguing. We can throw out Hadoukens with a D-pad, but it is tiring to do so. We did try it on the Pandora Box DX, and there was one main problem. The diagonals on the sticks did not work very well, but the D-pad worked okay. And surprisingly, this actually worked better on the Pandora Box 3D systems. So let's see if we can open it up and fix that D-pad. There's only six screws on the back, then we used a guitar pick to pry it open. 
So this is what the inside looks like. After disconnecting the battery and the rumble motors, we can get to the other side of the board. But unfortunately, I don't think there's much we can do with the D-pad itself. We're just left with this hard click. Let's get to the pros and cons. For Switch games that need analog and triggers, this controller works extremely well. Its only real flaw is the D-pad. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory. I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. See you on the seaside. I will be waiting in my speedo.